You probably want to know what is facetism, right? But before we jump into more details, do you also know what does POPs mean? Or have you ever wondered what does Nympism mean? Well, don't worry, we'll make sure to explain these terms as well. Stay tuned. After building hundreds of projects in Brussels, I knew a secret recipe. Never demolish the front facade and your project will go very smooth. This recipe is called facetism. The most simple definition of facetism is the following. The principle of preserving the existing front facade of one building and constructing a modern building behind it. Even though this principle of building seems logical and noble, it resembles a simple solution for restoring an existing structure in most feasible way, caring only for affordability and neglecting the soul of the building and the dynamics of the users. Additionally, this process often occurs as a reasonable answer to buildings that were poorly maintained throughout the time. However, lately this phenomenon is trend that is going out of control and encourages investors to buy and demolish huge properties under the mantle of savers of the urban environment. In a very warm day last summer, I was walking down in Brussels and I found a very nice, cozy, green open space. And I said to myself, I will lay down here a little bit to cool down under this nice tree. After five minutes, a security guy approached me and said, Sir, you can sit here. I said, what the fuck? Isn't it an open public space? I said, no, this is POP. It's a privately owned public space. POPs, P-O-P-S. We have a whole show on POPs, which stands for privately owned private spaces. POPs are open spaces that on the first glance look public, but they are actually under corporate jurisdiction. In other words, at these places you should follow the rules of the owner. The root problem is that these urban spaces are being ignored for such a long time that they have lost the capability of generating any value. Cheapest, quickest and most uncreative solution for any government is to lease or sell these spaces to a private investor. More so, these type of places are often connected to the public realm, but they are designed according to standardized files that fit the corporate standards of the private entity in charge. With that, POPs are being designed in a monocentric way, which makes them look sterile and exclusive for a wide range of people. In this way, one company manages to impose power and dictate private will on a wider public sphere while hypocritically promotes itself as a public engager. What we really don't like here is the misleading name privately owned public space. We believe that the acronym POPs is a word wash strategy and more adequate name for this phenomena should be POS, privately owned open space and please without the word public included. Not in my backyard, not in my backyard. Well, this is also my backyard, motherfucker. NIMBYism. Now, this terminology is very tricky. On one hand, it can be used to label and stigmatize a group of activists who care for their environment as hippies and non-progressive tree huggers. But on the other hand, this word can be used for privileged conservatives who don't want to allow a common good to be built in their proximity. Karens. That's why, in our personal opinion, we don't like this phrase, because it polarizes the public and it's ignoring the nuances and piling up together little islands of truth. And while speaking for polarization, it's a great time to conclude this episode with the following point. And of course, a sketch on the right side. These acronyms and phrases are really helpful in order to formulate a complex and spontaneous urban phenomenon. But at the same time, many people are using them without even deeply understanding their meaning. Using these terminologies in a nonchalant way often leads to polarization of the public opinion and does not allow us to see the nuances between. Because please remember, everything in the world is relative and there is no absolute truth in complex systems. This heavily applies in an urban phenomenon as well. Thanks again for watching Stripping Architecture and don't forget, as always, to share, subscribe and like and comment for sure. Bye.
have a nice day and see you next episode.